Hi everyone. Part of being a mariner requires you to understand the concepts of ship construction for each and every part of the ship. In today's video, I am going to be talking about the construction of the bulbous bow and what factors are kept in mind, how is a bulbous bow constructed, what kind of plating, stiffening and strengthening arrangements is provided in a bulbous bow. So let's get started with today's video. The bow is a part of the ship between the stem and the collision or the four-peak bulkhead. It is adjacent part of the four-peak to the parallel mid-body. The space forward of the collision bulkhead and below the main deck is the four-peak. The four-peak tank is the lowest space in the bow and is often divided in a lower and an upper four-peak tank. The four-peak tank is usually used as a ballast tank. If the ship is not loaded, this is often filled with water to increase the draft and to reduce the trim by the stern. Usually there is a wash bulkhead at the center line in the peak tanks. This prevents the sloshing when a water or when a tank is partly filled. If you don't know what sloshing is, sloshing is the fast movement of water from port to starboard. The wash bulkhead at the center line also improves the rolling behavior of the ship. Directly behind the four peak, there can be another tank, such as a deep tank, that also extends from starboard to port and from the bottom to the deck used for ballast or fuel. On your screens right now, the drawing that you can see, the number one, what is marked is the hatch combing. Number two, if you see the forward part of the vessel is the breakwater. Number three are the bulwark stanchions and number four is the transition from longitudinal transverse framing system. As we go along in the video, I will show you the other parts of the vessel as well and how it is constructed, what they are called and how it all contributes to the construction of the bulbous bow and the strengthening of the vessel. In the top of the four peak tank, right below the anchor windlass, there are chain lockers for the storage of the anchor chains. Above the weather deck is the bow. There is often a forecastle, a superstructure from bow to at least above the collision bulkhead. So you can see on your screens here, I'm showing you the forecastle deck and the anchor chains, the mooring windlass is there as well. Sometimes extended further aft to even aft of number one hatch, the forecastle is protected against overcoming sea by a bulwark. So I showed you some bulwarks in the previous slide. That was the bulwark stanchions. Now on the forecastle, which you can see right now, is the windlass and other mooring equipment. The foremast is usually located at the after part of the forecastle deck. So you can see the foremast, the bottom part of the foremast here. I could not show you the full foremast. The forecastle here that you see can be divided into stores and workshop for ship's maintenance. Tools for work on the deck, storage for paint, storage for cargo handling equipment, so right below this uh, forecastle, sometimes you will have the paint locker, which has the fixed firefighting equipment. On my last ship, there were uh, sprinkler systems as, uh, attached to the paint locker. You have the bosun's locker as well sometimes, which contains all of the bosun store, the carpenter store. And sometimes you will also have uh, the mooring, spare mooring ropes stored there. And then you may also have storage for cargo, cargo handling equipment, like on container ships. You may have twist locks or spare container lashing equipment, slings, shackles, airbags, so and forth. So these items are usually stored in racks made for this purpose. If necessary, these racks can be lifted up by the ship's crane or the crane of the hatch cradle. Container lashing gear is often stored in boxes along the hatch combing. Now on the next screen that you see here, you can see number one is the bow. Number two is the forecastle deck. Number three is the breakwater. This is a giving you a separate view altogether. Number four is the bulbous bow. Number five is the main deck. Number six is the stringer decks. Then number seven is the bow thruster room. Number eight is hatch combings with the brackets. Number nine is the de-aerating pipes. Just come back a little, you can see number nine there. Number 10 is the top rail. Number 11, vent of the wing tanks. Number 12 are the lightning openings. Number 13 is the transition of transverse to longitudinal framing systems. 
So you can see up to number 13 and the diff number 13 forms the border of the transverse and the longitudinal framing systems. You can see how the frames are there. The way the frames are in the forward part of the 13 is very different from how the frames are in the aft part of the 13. Number 14 is the tank top and number 15 is the web frames. All right. So the bow is subject to extra large forces, acceleration and stresses that is caused by the pitching of the ship, such as the pitching stresses, the fore peak moving in and out of the water, which causes the panting stresses, maintaining speed in heavy weather, as well as if the vessel is going to ice prone areas, then that bow is also subjected to extra large forces because of the ice secretion or simply the vessel's movement through the ice. All right, so items stored in the four peak spaces need to be properly sea fastened in connection with the acceleration forces. To compensate for the forces mentioned, the forward part of a ship needs additional reinforcements that sometimes extends to all the midships. So here I have focused more on the part of the bulbous bow and you can see how the ship is constructed or the bulbous bow is constructed. I'll show you some more figures and more diagrams which will give you a better understanding of the uh, construction of the bulbous bow. So here also you can see number four is of course the bulbous bow, right? Then number seven you can see is a bow thruster room. That's where the bow thrusters are housed. It's a hollow space with twin fans or a single fan sometimes depending on the type of the bow thruster. Then number 15 you can see is the other web frames that provides strengthening to the four part. Number six you have the stringer plates. So the stringer plates are also for strengthening. And number 11 is of course the vent of the wing tank that is not important for the strengthening right now. Then this is another detailed drawing. I'll take you through all that detailed drawing as well. So to compensate for the forces as experienced by the forward part of the ship, the forward part of the ship needs additional reinforcements. All right, that sometimes extend to all the part of the midships. All right, then a bulbous bow can be added to reduce the wave resistance the bow wave and the fore shoulder wave cause a resistance that has a negative influence on the speed of the ship. The added bulb creates a wave which interferes with the bow and shoulder waves ideally eliminating them thereby improving the wave resistance of the ship. However, only for the draft the bulbous bow has been designed for. So let me take you through some more parts of the construction of the bulbous bow. So you can see here number one is the bulbous bow. Then number two, just notice what number two is. That is the breast hook. Then number three forms the flooring. And number four is the floor stiffeners that strengthen the flooring. Then number five is again the lightning openings. Number six are the stringers or sometimes they are called the flats. Number seven is the center keel in the bulbous bow. Number eight is the stem bar. Number nine is again, you can see the transition of the flat plates to shell stringers. Right? Can you see the transition there from flat plates to st shell stringers? Then number 10 is the shell frame. Number 11 is the hose pipe for the anchors. Number 12 is the anchor pocket. All right? Just go up and you can see what I'm talking about. 11 and 12 are on the towards the anchor. Number 13 is the chain locker again where the anchor is stored. Number 14 are the watertight bulkheads or the collision bulkheads, which is the main strengthening part of the forward part of the vessel and protects the vessel in case of a, a head on collision. All right. And then we have the ladder to the forecastle deck. Number 15. Number 16 again is the weather deck. All right. The main weather deck. Number 17, you have the emergency fire pump or the bilge pump sometimes located there as well. Number 18 is the bilge line in the bow thruster room. Number 19 is the four peak tank, the water ballast four peak tank that I talked about before. Number 20 again, you can see is the bow thruster tunnel that I talked about previously. You can see how it is a hollow tunnel. There's a fan, the bow thruster fan is there. And uh, number 21, you have the floor slab in the bow thruster room that also provides strengthening to the bow thruster. Number 22, you can see is the deep tank. Number 23 is against again the floors and number 24 is the wash bulkhead at the center line of the ship. All right. 
Now the bulbous bow is in fact a piece of the protruding bow that produces its own wave that cancels out the normal bow wave and this way it improves the wave pattern all around the ship all depending on the design of the bulb from a long knife type of form to a ball form so sometimes if you are sailing on ice vessels the bulbous bow design for ice cutters or as a ice cutter or an ice vessel is different from the bulbous bow vessel which is in which travels in normal sea sea going or sea or rather it doesn't go to the ice conditions so you will see the different types of vessels the purpose of different type of vessels and the bulbous bow design for the different vessels is slightly different the ideal situation is one where the ship cuts through the waves generating no waves itself every wave that is created by the ship is energy wasted comparing it compare a tugboat with a fine yacht and you will realize what i'm talking about so the bulbous bow or the bulb is the most effective at certain draft for loaded or ballast condition it could well be that in the case of the adverse situation a bulbous bow produces more resistance now i will show you some more pictures where you can see how the bulbous bow is constructed right from the formation stage or right from the conception stage all the way to when it is completely formed as a bulbous bow for a vessel and i'll also show you some drawings which explain the sending part of the bulbous bow further so you can see here how number 1 is of course the bulbous bow with the stringers and the floors number 2 is the bow thruster room number 3 at the top is the forecastle deck number 4 is the combing foremost hold number 5 are steps in the foremost hold for the containers number 6 is the collision bulkhead one of the most important aspects of the strengthening of the forward part number 7 could be a ballast tank and number 8 are the spaces in the forecastle now why am i showing you the bulbous bow from different angles is because i want you to be able to understand how the framings and the stringers and the plates are formed in the forward part of the vessel from different angles so that you can visualize it and understand it better so you can see there is some transverse framing there so some floors some stringer plates and then you know that that framing system changes as we go towards midships because towards the midships we have to construct the vessel or you know strengthen the vessel differently for the stresses that it experiences the forward part of the vessel experiences different kind of the st stresses compared to the mid part of the vessel that is why the vessel has to be constructed differently and the plates and the stringers and the flooring systems or the longitudinals and the transverse have to be placed differently for each part of the vessel you can see here how once the bulbous bow is constructed this is of course a picture from the dry dock you can see how it all looks like how it is all shaped how the shape is given to a vessel depending on the purpose of the vessel and the areas it is going to transit you can also see that the fact that this vessel has a bulbous bow is indicated by a symbol uh, if you can see right below the anchor uh, there is a shape there of the bulbous bow that indicates that the vessel has a bulbous bow and the circular fan shape behind the bulbous bow shape indicates the vessel has a bow thruster you can see the bow thruster tunnel here as well it's a hollow tunnel at the bottom of the vessel just aft of the bulbous bow so the design of the bulbous bow should be such so that it creates its own waves and cancels out the waves that are produced by the uh, movement of the vessel so detailed drawing of the part of the ship is shown to you giving you a clear picture of the various framing systems you also have to note that the web frames are never isolated they are always part of a ring frame so you can see here number 1 is the aft direction of course number 2 is the main deck this is from the main deck number 3 is the deck beams number 4 are the deck longitudinals number 5 is the longitudinal bulkhead with longitudinal framing number 6 are the longitudinals number 7 is the transverse framing for ice strengthening and number 8 is the transverse frame or right, so the stiffening so you can see for every three frames there is a web frame the stiffening under the web main deck runs in the longitudinal direction now directly underneath this is the ice belt So in this section there is an extra frame for every frame. The ice track can run all the way from the forward part of the vessel to the place where the ship is at its widest. So here you can see how the bulbous bow and how the framing system strengthening and the 
construction is carried out. So I've tried to show you the same part of the vessel from different angles and I've tried to highlight the uh, construction and the different strengthening plates used to strengthen the bulbous bow. I hope you found this video useful. This is an important video for you to be able to understand how the vessels are constructed to uh, counteract for the resistance or the stresses it experiences during transition at sea or in port. Thank you for watching guys and let me know what you thought about this video. Bye for now.